Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's August 1st, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast, if it's in length, episode number 610. And I feel like being on the right today. Okay. So, Damon, you're on the left. I'm still on the bottom. Yep. Positional element. Anyways. Anyways. I have I have no idea. It, it, it's where I positioned us on the frame. I got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Let's just go right into it. Uh, new world, new games, one shot. Uh, so, uh, this past month I have been fed moded, I think. I don't think I had a raise from it. Uh, from being a regular operator to a, uh, teaching associate is the official title. Okay. I had an advancement in my career, and you you you, you give me golf claps. No, I was applauding. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, like golf claps are this, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, so the same exact thing, but the full hand instead of just the tips <laughs> are different. Well, there is a difference between a full hand and just the beginning of the of the fingers. So, anyways, I mean, sometimes you want just a little. Sometimes you want a lot. Like, like, come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, so I've been uh, uh, helping to to train a class while we've been interviewing for a lot of people. Um. <laughs> Interviewing Any, if you know of anybody in the Austin area who likes sports and wants to watch TV all day, it's more than that, but basic description, uh, let me know and I can point you in the direction to apply. Anyways. Mm -hmm. I would say that they like sports, not that they're really into sports. Because I could see immediately that someone would just be so focused on watching the sports and not doing the actual job. Mm. Yeah, but you kind of need to. Most of our stuff is. Yeah, but if you don't like sports and you're being forced to watch sports. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. I mean, you. Well, you no, no, no. I, I <laughs> are you going to enjoy your experience? <laughs> right. Are, are you going to anyway. understand what's going on so that you know how to. <laughs> so that you can properly do your job? That sort of thing. Um. Anyway. I think the emphasis on the sports, yes, is a little bit strong when it comes comes to the training, but uh, I, I can understand where they're coming from. Anyways, beside the point. Um, in addition, because the Olympics started, um, I am actually supporting our our team uh, by taking this last bunch of trainees and essentially playing team lead uh, with them, making sure that they've got got work to do that they're covered uh, supporting them in any ways and instead of like working as part of a training class ish thing i'm actually 
kind of doing what the lead of my old role was doing, kind of, sort of. Um, mm -hmm. Not like 100%, just kind of like a temporary thing. So that's that's how I'm helping that out. i uh, got a couple other jobs to do for uh, working on some documentation for people who are asking me to do some stuff. So I've been busy at work. Uh, it, it hasn't been one of those days where I could basically have my work laptop next to me open with the what's going on and be instead of just sitting there doing nothing, be on my regular computer playing Final Fantasy fourteen, which is me cheating, mm -hmm. but you know, paying attention to, to when it is. So just it's right over here, etc. So um, you're I can't doing do that now. Your job. Yeah, I gotta actually like work. Yeah. Which is great because it means it's more like engaging. Engaging. Instead of being like, yeah. this is boring. No one just else. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Don't get me wrong, I would like to be just playing video games all day, but in order to play those video games it works. I get money. Yeah. To play those video money games. Money isn't Money makes the world go round. The third go round, the third go round. Anyways. I knew that would make you do that. Um, sometimes it's still too easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like or pushing a button. Just a button, button. Push the button. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, in addition, this month I've gotten into uh, two new D and D games. One that's uh, every two weeks. Sadly, I had my first session just yesterday. Uh, on it, um, and that was fun because I'm kind of a racist bastard in there for uh, reasons. It's. It's gonna be enjoyable. I mean, I, I, I the other players are meant to hate me. Okay. Yeah. I'm a dragonborn. I think all the other races are lesser than than me. There was an elf that was talking. I told him to shut up. <clears throat> so it kind of sounds like you're more of a sadist dungeon master. No, I'm not DMing this one. I'm playing. Oh, yeah. He's a player. He's I'm a player, player in this. Well, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's based off of lore of world and uh, uh, me jumping into the middle of this game, I decided, <laughs> hey, Dustin, um, what are we brothers? He goes, yeah, that'd be great. Mm. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, you got to understand something. I know how, how your character is going to be feeling. Considering where our noble lineage, our noble lineage, I'm going to be talking, pulling the party line that you're not pulling. God. Oh. It's great. Uh, another one uh, is a DBDM doing something that's calling catastrophe and trauma. And I'm hoping for improvement. I'm pushing for it. Okay. Baby DM. I, I want to be there for him. I'm playing daddy DM. That's cool. Um, Sometimes you need that. Ooh. Yeah. And then I still got my Wednesday game, which uh, depending on time, I'm either DMing for him or I'm playing. So <laughs> um, for various reasons. And last but not least, last Sunday, a week ago, uh, I got a shot. My arm. Yay. Yeah. Walked in on on Saturday to the to the pharmacy and they said, uh, yeah, we would give you one, but we don't have the people to uh in, in order to do it. Uh, but you can either like come back at a later time or uh, uh go over to the minute clinic and, and Set an appointment uh, for the Johnson & Johnson shot. And I'm like, well, that I know what's going to be happening and I can get one for tomorrow. So set appointment. Go in. They get me in 10 minutes early. I'm like, nice. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> this is a doctor's or a clinic. Early? That's weird. Yeah. 
one, yeah. one and done. And uh, a week from tomorrow, uh, I need to go into the office for my little rotation. So I will be considered fully vaccinated in one week. It'll be perfect. It is the Johnson Johnson shot. I don't know if Gary's going to give me weird looks. <clears throat> um, no, at this point, anyways. <laughs> my, my, my pharmacy yeah. tech, when I told my pharmacy tech friend, uh, he, he goes, okay. And he looked at me judgingly uh, via chat. He literally says, looks at you judgingly. <laughs> But hey, one and done. Made sure everything's fine. I'm good. Anyways, that's me. Damon? Well, I will say congrats on getting vaccinated, because at least that's done. Yeah, finally. Because, well, it everyone, me I mean, enough. just if everyone just gets fucking vaccinated, anyway. Um, so, um, speaking of which, I <laughs> you know, people of... just going around with trank darts <laughs> with the vaccine in them. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, um, so speaking of like vaccinations and being around people, I put down so many hugs. Um, work and stuff has been kind of the same, but when the good things was, I was uh, I went to the office twice last month. Um, one to just do letters, and then the following week I went in uh, because our boss my boss and her our boss was in town she's she's in station in florida so um she came in and she was there for a week and i got to see her and um i got to see um me and my boss kelly were in the office for the same time in a long time so um she's always been like super friendly so she actually came in for a hug we're all vaccinated so it's all kind of cool uh, but that was sort of the thing like it was like I have not done this in a while, which seems kind of weird, but it's sort of the thing, the truth. Um, um, later on, um, the chorus had its, um, we've been doing a uh, raffle for the past, it was supposed to end last year, but COVID. So it ended this year and I was around chorus members who I've only been interacting with virtually for the past year and um, just getting an opportunity to just like talk to and hug people and just like have those moments was just very enlightening. It felt good. And I know we're still having issues and yada, 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 but it was a good moment to have um for me just because I, I i realized how much i've missed that if that makes sense mm -hmm. um yeah i've you know we've had people here here and there and i've you know you know my friends that come every other monday you know i hug them but this one was different i think it's because of the fact that i have not interacted with these people in like months if not year um that it was very just you know like i said just nice it was very nice to happen so yeah um i i won't go too much on a like get vaccinated tangent but i think maybe gary will but um um <laughs> uh, but it i totally think and wish like this could i wanted to go away but i know it's not going to go away that quickly but i really like urge everyone to fucking get vaccinated um if you're listening to disinformation or whatever whatever is telling you not to like shut it down because it's done like i'm done like i i i've heard i've seen so many memes and stuff and i agree with them like maybe this time if you don't want to get vaccinated maybe you should stay home like, maybe you should stay indoors. Maybe you should get away. Maybe you shouldn't go outside. Maybe you should, you know, if you don't want to wear masks and you don't want to go vaccinated, then stay the fuck at home. Like, we're tired. Those of us who followed the rules and 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 took the advice and did what we were supposed to do and wore the mask and got the vaccine and everything else, we're tired of waiting for y'all asses. So, like, <laughs> so you can stay the fuck at home. So maybe I can once go 
to something and not have this under, you know, under the table like fear. Yeah. So and vaccinations are supposed to be free. So yeah. And there are it's... things that need to happen to make this you know, it would be great if things could happen and make to make it so that it would have that reality but that's not just gonna, that's not going to happen and at least not anytime soon i don't think anyway that's me gary <laughs> sorry i'm <laughs> i don't want to get on a tangent because i'll get on a tangent no it's fine um so seven months down five to go and then the year known as 2021 will be over um mm-hmm yeah, so uh, July kind of flew by really fast. Um, work's been really busy. Uh, I found myself being more stressed and anxious this month than any other month of the year um, mm-hmm. on several fronts. I, I won't get into all the details, but it's not it's not specifically about work. But mm. um, work is a piece of it just because things have gotten busier. And I have a limitation on work. Um, we, they do not really honor overtime. Mm-hmm. Um, unless absolutely necessary. So you only have so many hours a week to get the things done that you need to get done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, and then I've put in requests with the state for some spending and they've denied them. And I'm very frustrated by that um, because it's coming down to, pe- it's being very pedantical. It's like, well, that's not in the budget like because it's not an existing light item. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that's just a no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Out. Jacob? Oh, nope. It's already no. a contract. It's already established. Can't touch it. Well, no, that's not true. You could make an amendment mm. to put in a request to make a new thing, but like that's a whole process, and it certainly isn't going to happen in the time frame that I need to get some things done. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I was in a really foul mood on Friday, like for most of the day. So, Fair. and I, I ended up having a meeting with my director because I was like, please help me try to understand why this is the way it is and what it comes down to is is that we have a person at the state level that's uh very anal retentive uh, and exacting mm. so yes i'm like oh okay so yeah. there's that um an opposing kindred spirit no it's they're and this is one of the things that I've been running into is that there is no guidebook, no rules, nothing to mm-hmm. document as to how these project officers determine yays and nays. So it seems like it's kind of on a whim and I'm really irritated by that. And the reason I went to my director, I was like, okay, four years ago, this was an acceptable cost under this line item. Why isn't it now? Mm. And my director admitted that it is hypocritical and it could have been that there was a change in project officer um, and agreed with me that it's probably not best to poke the bear on this one because one outcome could be, oh, well, that should have never been put under that light item four years ago. Mm. Right. Mama. That, oh. so, right. So I'm just like, oh, OK. So it's pretty bad when I woke up this morning and I was already like having sort of weird quasi semi-sleep dreams about like ways to get around this issue, but it's not going to happen. So that being said, uh, in reference to what both of you were talking about earlier, Hey kids, uh, the Delta variant is out there for COVID. Um, it's not a good thing. And, um, we're only about halfway through vaccination as a country. So, uh, on average, if you meet two people on the street, one of them's vaccinated, one of them isn't. Now, why does vaccination matter at this point? Well, because the Delta variant is easily as spreadable whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. Mm-hmm. So while you might have rather mild symptoms, um, I don't know if I've seen anything that you'll have no symptoms, um, but that could be because this is the complication. Like you have to get tested to know that you have it. And if you don't have symptoms, then you're probably not getting tested. Why would you? So we don't necessarily think we're going to have data about vaccinated people that are asymptomatic because why would they bother? Mm -hmm. But if you have some symptoms and you're curious, then that 
you know, could be a thing. I'm also going to drop a little bit of a bombshell right now um, that is surprising to me in a really weird way. So if you've been paying attention to the U.S. news about the COVID Delta variant situation and that there was an outbreak in Massachusetts Mm -hmm. around Cape Town, which happens to be Provincetown, and it was during the month of July. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder what was going on then. I know, I know. Wait. <laughs> um, I wonder, wasn't there a movie that took place there? I mean, maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, um, well, what I what I'm more concerned about is is that uh it hasn't been outright said, but it's very frustrating to me because well, it's not like it's they say it, it started with July 4th weekend, mm-hmm. which is fine. But right after July 4th was a very large event with a uh, thousand upwards of multiple thousands, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's related to our community. Mm-hmm. In fact, it's a whole week long in Provincetown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they had an outbreak situation there. There was a yeah. there were bears in Provincetown for a week. Yes, strange or, as that is. So it was. No. A yes, it was a bear week. We get it. Yeah, we know what you're going for. Yeah, got it. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, because it really goes to show that. You think you know things, and you think you're possibly doing the right thing. Um, mm-hmm. But there is another part of me that's like, well, technically, it benefits us purely because if it hadn't happened, then we wouldn't know what we know now, mm-hmm. which is that the variant is easily spread amongst the vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And therefore makes it that much more dangerous in that it's easily spreadable, period. It doesn't matter whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. And that's more problematic for the unvaccinated because that means if you've chosen not to get vaccinated, then you are that much more likely to to contract it. And yeah. as it was confirmed, because I had a, a in um, sort of a meeting last night uh, with a friend of mine for an event that's coming up and we were discussing things and they were telling me, they're like, I know people that work in, you know, in emergency rooms and so on in hospitals. And they're like, that stuff that you see on social media about the last words that people are saying, or that they're, you know, wishing that they could get vaccinated and the health, you know, core has to say, that's not how it works. Yeah. Like, even if we could vaccinate you right now, it doesn't protect you. Like, that's yeah. that's not how the body, that's not how science works. Like, you have to build up your immunity. Mm-hmm. It is not an instantaneous kind of thing. This is not this is not a virtual game where you just power up out of nowhere because you took a potion. Like, the, the, the imagination is misaligned to the reality, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm heading to an event in later this month Uh because it's august 1st now and i am the only reason right now that i'm still going is because they are requiring vaccinations like you have to show proof of your vaccination you have you can't do a photo you can't you have to show either your card or a um, negative COVID test within 72 hours of your arrival. Um, Which and I was just asked about that, Damon, because this friend I met with, they were like, where can you get a COVID test? And I was like, kind of puzzled by the question because I was like, why would we be asking this question? Like, I thought it was obvious that everybody knew where you get a COVID test. I was like, at any pharmacy, basically? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you just have to schedule it. I'm like, but right now, although... What I said last night may may not be true in a couple of days. What I said was getting a COVID test should be relatively easy compared to six months ago because not as many people are getting tested. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the backlog where you have to wait 
like two or three days out for your scheduled appointment plus another three days to get your results or four days to get your results. Mm -hmm. Like theoretically, I, I mean, it's all a pipeline issue, kids. Like you can only put so much stuff into the pipeline to get so much stuff out. So mm -hmm. if everybody rushes to get tested, then that bogs everything down. It makes the labs like run behind and it takes that much longer to get things done. And the reason they asked Damon is like you're saying, there's this whole thing going on right now that you have to have a test with it, a negative test within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. um, but that makes it challenging because that's relying on a smooth running system that you can get your test and your results within the Such window. Mm -hmm. And and this was a problem within the past six, five, four months because uh, around January through March, because people were trying to travel. And yep. in order to air travel, you needed this test, you know, within 72 hour or whatever, but you weren't able to get your results before you could leave. Yeah. So that kind of screwed you and that you couldn't fly. Me. I should look this up before I get on the flight. Um. <laughs> so you're bringing <laughs> point, David, about that there's an event coming up because our Pride picnic is coming up in less than two weeks. Uh, that's what this meeting was about, uh, my cohort in the kitchen. And it's been speculated, like not speculated, but it's been uh, brought up for discussion amongst the board for the nonprofit whether or not we should have the event. And so they turned to me as the public health person to say, what are your thoughts? Well, I deferred to the experts, only this all came in late on Friday, so I don't have an answer just yet. So tomorrow being the first working day, I'm gonna be spending time trying to get a definitive and figure out what we're gonna do because it's very short notice to try to change the event, but it is mostly outdoors and yet at the same time, how practical will it be to request that everybody wears masks? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We're in a very challenging time. So my 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 big thing is, is I agree, like, yes, you should go get vaccinated if you can. Um, and by if you can, I mean not because you choose not to, but because you medically perhaps cannot. Like my yeah. best friend has a family member that um, has had a disease in the past year that puts them on the you shouldn't get vaccinated list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we don't know what the the results will be. The downside of that means that you know they don't get to do as much yeah. um, or see people or whatever. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And that's sort of the thing. Like we've been so again, kind of. I know we're. I know we should move on, but like the chorus has been having conversations because we're going to try to get back into live rehearsals in September, live in person rehearsals in September. And I was part of a team, a group that was in charge of like coming up with the things to um the guidelines for when we come back uh we're requiring vaccinations um and showing proof of vaccination we're requiring if you um can't get the vaccine or choose not to for whatever reason um that you're if you're coming you have to wear a mask these are kind of our big requirements to come for everyone to come back along with like spacing and stuff like that we're going to have um, air filtration units that we've gotten donated to us and um, hand sanitizer and all that stuff all over the place. Um, and the main reason, original, so it was kind of <laughs> like literally when we were first talking about it, it was right before all this shit with the Delta variant was like hitting and we were all just like, well, we're doing it for the sake of the broader spectrum because we want everyone to understand that the chorus wants everyone to be as connected as possible. Now um, it's going to almost be like, well, it kind of needs to be required because um, there's all this stuff going on and you don't want to, you know, you don't want anyone to get sick. We're going to have, you know, it's, but it's, again, I think it's things that need to be done. And it's unfortunate that we have to think like this, but it's for everyone's safety. And I know. Oh, okay, to kind of be jokey, but really kind of serious. Um, I don't want to get sick, y'all. Like, I don't think anyone really likes being sick, like in general. And I'm right. a bitch when I'm sick. I will own that. <laughs> <laughs> I will own that. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I'd rather not have to have to deal with that. And I think Jim would appreciate if he didn't have to deal with that either. Um and that's kind of not what I'm like, I know it's a joke, but like, that's what I'm sitting here thinking about. Yeah. If things happen, you know, what can you do? Um, I think I'm going to, um, 
borrow our thermometer that we have upstairs, our one that forehead thermometer to take with me when I go to um, um, the run. Mm-hmm. Just to, as another thing to kind of check things, because I, you know, I am flying, so I'm going to be around a whole bunch of people. I'm going to be in a confined space with on the flight. I'm going to come to a hotel, and then I'm going to the event. And the event has things in place, which is fine, but you don't know what happened between then and now. So, right. yeah. So yeah. Anyway, and and. Mm-hmm. One of my most troubling issues that I keep seeing that's really starting to piss me off is people who lie about their vaccination. Yeah. So they have a vaccination card. They filled it out themselves. They made some bullshit up. They like bought one off the internet, whatever. They lie to their employers. Then Mm -hmm. there's like an outbreak type situation and it gets investigated and it's find out that the person lied. Mm. Like, well, I only got one shot. I didn't go back for the second one or whatever. And I'm like, Really? Like, like what's what's bothering me the most about this is that we haven't gotten to this point yet. And I thought we would have by now that it gets litigious, that somebody actually sues somebody else because someone mm-hmm. died. Like, yeah. that's what I'm waiting for here in the U.S., that it takes that kind of a drastic action for people to suddenly, like, sit up and pay attention and be like, oh, you mean I could be sued for for like murder? Yes, you could, could be arrested if it could be proven. For murder. Right, that you expose yeah. somebody and cause their death. Yes, it's it's quite possible. Mm. Um, I mean, it would take a bunch of work, but anyway, so. Yeah. It um, would be hard, but I could see it. That would be it. Like, that's the thing. And again, I, I keep talking about this. God damn it. But like, <laughs> that's the thing I feel like we need. Because it, it needs to be personal mm-hmm. for people to get, like, over this whole, like, situation. Um. And the only way to make it personal is if it hits either the heart or the wallet. Usually the wallet. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, and and I can understand why some people out there are saying things, you know, like, well, this is Darwin's theory, you know, like or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, you know, that like, you know, if you're not going to get vaccinated, then you pay the consequence of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not just those people that are affected. No. And that's the thing what people don't understand. Yeah. So um, I also wanted to say, like, there was a, a recent post that's been shared around on social media uh, by a gentleman named Jer- Jeremy Faust, um, who apparently is an MDMS ER physician, who uh, their Twitter post from a couple days ago keeps getting shared. It says the CDC has not backtracked on masks. The unvaccinated did not heed the call to stay masked in far too many areas. Now cases and hospitalizations have blown up in those places. The CDC has responded to our collective behaviors, not backtracked. Mm -hmm. There, I said it. Hashtag science. Um, And I think it's important that people understand, like, because there was confusion. It's like, whoa, why did the CDC suddenly make this pivot and be talking about, like, masking again? Um, Because we know that masking works. Like, it's how you can help prevent or reduce the amount of spread. That's just how simple it is. Um, you know, and locally, like my employer put out a, a graphical representation um, to help explain locally where we stand. And in essence, we are at 50% across our entire county as far as vaccination. So that's why we've been discussing this publicly or amongst each other. Like you have a two in one chance. You go to the grocery store, you go to get gas, you do whatever, like just realize Every other person that you're meeting may be vaccinated, maybe not vaccinated. And that's mm. that's the thing you kind of have to keep in mind. And, yeah, it's a real pain in the ass. Nobody wants to wear a mask. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, there are some Different. people who probably kind of enjoy it or like it and, and yeah. don't have an issue with it. Um, so, yeah. I'm, it, it comes in handy during the winter time, if anything. Well, True. right. Yeah. And, you know. But that's so, the for, winter. It's not winter right now. And for people like me who had allergies and shit, like, holy shit, like, it was really nice to be outside and not have to worry about, like, <laughs> yeah, eyes, yes, but, like, not in the nose and the mouth. <laughs> well, right, and, like, you know, flu was down overall, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a couple things that relate to that. One of them is, uh, you know, the about the exposure because of masking. The other one is just because we weren't going out as much, you know, so there's there's a, a lot of aspects to that that... um that are important. So the uh, the other reason I'm saying seven down and five to go is the year's not over and we don't know what's going to happen. And it's quite possible that the fall sees another surge. Um, we're starting to see a ramp up and 
whether or not it looks just like before is all about people's behaviors and decisions. Um, you know, and the downside is, is that, you know, if you're if you're getting vaccinated, the reality is you're looking at a four to six week window until you're fully covered because it takes time for your immunity to build up. So that's the other downside is if people think, you know, especially I did see some statistics that like vaccination rates are starting to really climb up again. And I'm like, oh, good. Like, hopefully this is, you know, sign of kind of a call to people that they realize that they need to do that. The downside is you're kind of starting to be late if you think you're going to go get it now and you're going to be 100 percent cool there's no guarantee in that and even yeah. at four to six weeks there's no guarantee in that like everybody's body is just different yeah. so i am hopeful that people are going to go and get vaccinated as best they can when they can um and you may not necessarily have options a whole lot in choosing which you end up getting vaccinated with so mm -hmm. you know you what you can. something something is better than nothing mm -hmm. true so, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and you know, the people that are holding out because, you know, they don't trust science, they don't understand science, they failed science in the public education system. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I've seen stuff posted about like, this is the scientific method playing out in front of our eyes, you know, mm. like, but I'm like, that doesn't matter because if they didn't understand it to begin with, they're still not going to understand mm. it now. So key points, get vaccinated. Wear a mask still. I, I'm definitely going going to be going out and wearing a mask. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I just kind of got used to it in driving. Hey, I think we should like continue. Uh, we've got we stuff yes. to do. Yeah. So let's go into this. You know, fun fact, we've never gotten a copyright claim for that. Oh. Probably because it's really short. Well, also, I think uh, maybe Janet Jackson doesn't just doesn't give a fuck. Like, I don't you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you, it's like if you're using a six second clip of one of my songs, it's sure that's fine. If you're playing the entire thing, uh, it might be a different matter. Yeah, right. Yeah, anyways, Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, we got a couple more likes in Facebook land. We would like to thank Bryce Wilson and Gray Kraus for liking us on Facebook. Thank you. Mr. Damon, how about over at YouTube? So we got a we got a comment on episode 608, which was our all team no shade goodbye Xtube. Edward M asked, Are you all gay? Um Girl, so like, here's my problem with this question. I don't know if they're being sarcastic, if they're being like honestly, like truly inquisitive. Because there's a part of me that's like, did yeah. you like if you're new to us, that's one thing. But then there's like, it's like a multi-layer thing. I'm like, okay, if you're new and you don't know us, that's one thing. And then if you go further, I'm not sure how you don't know that. Um, mm. we, we are the like, bear podcast of indeterminate length. Obviously, you might not know what bear is. Maybe I don't know. Who knows? We we do have yeah. the tag on pretty much every one of our videos right now of LGBTQIA plus or LGBTQ plus. I think we huh. don't list the IA, but it's implied. I mean, it just it just. Anyways, this this question really cracked my shit up because I was like, I saw it come through, and I was like, what? I was like, um... obviously you're new here, but yes, 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 we are. Mm. Uh, actually, yes. you know what? No, this is kind of a fair question. Maybe we're not all gay. Maybe one of us was bi. He wasn't even sure. Maybe one of us was pan. It, you know, there, our, yeah, uh... you, you, yeah. So there's a lot to the LGBTQIA. That, no, 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 that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Mm. Yeah. You could be ace. Are, are we just, are we just the G or are we classified right. somewhere else one of us could be well and that is that is one of the difficulties because gay is such an umbrella term mm -hmm. so like i've talked about this before just briefly i'll mention when i went to college i struggled a lot with my identity because i was okay being gay i was not okay being a homosexual mm. because i focused on the sex act and i didn't like mm. people focusing on the sex act so like but you know over the decades of the of the liberation movement, whatever you want to call it, like the mm. community has has shifted and moved in different ways. But we tend to use gay as an umbrella term. 
like women can be gay, men can be gay. You know what I mean? So like, it's not really everybody. Well, gay. a gay woman is re- referred to as a lesbian, right? But then, what's a gay man called? A gay man. I know that's yeah. that's kind of. I I had this thing. It's like <laughs> yeah. So what are gay men? If <laughs> I mean, are, are we like lesbians have their own word? Why don't gay we? Men are... Well, no, they're not. No. Uh, uh. Anyway. Roman. I, think, I don't know. I think the, the opposite term is anthros. Mm. That's a good thought. I'll look that up while we move on. Yeah, because yeah. lesbian comes from lesbo. So, Jeff, how about uh, other other th- uh, Other catch-alls. Uh, over a video, uh, video uh, we got uh, Vitruvian. Vitruvian? Vitruvian? There we are. I would say. Uh, uh, thank you for following us there. I'm sorry there isn't content there from uh, past 2010. Uh, hop over to YouTube. That's where pretty much everything's going now. Uh, and over on Twitter, we got Sky Turkish is following us. Thank you for, for joining us. Gary, review the shows that we told last. Um, so we have, of course, had our What's Going On for June of 2021. Um, and then, as we previously mentioned, 608 was All Tea, No Shade, Goodbye, X2, um, which none of us were really surprised by. Uh, and then two weeks ago, we did Landscape of Relationships series with Mr. Edward Angelini Cook as our guest host. Uh, and it was on forgiveness. So the previous month, we had done apologies. Then we talked about forgiveness. Um, so we're continuing that on with him. And then, um, unexpectedly... Uh, we did some change around for like what we were going to do for shows. And back on July 20th, um, we ended up discovering, finding out with several other different crossover communities that Greg Ballard uh, passed away suddenly um, from a Widowmaker heart attack. And um, I wanted to, you know, at least do our part in terms of recognition. He helped found and start the Men of the Den YouTube podcast series. Um, he was also a huge gamer and uh, just a all around well liked person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he He's had been a guest with us on uh, community. Yeah. And like did a lot of fundraising and activities and stuff and was incredibly like upbeat and like supportive uh, of folks. And so he was on uh, episode 424 with us when we did the the bear series. Um, the episode was playlists. And um, Greg was with us, so we did a, a flashback uh, of that. And um, since then, there's been a GoFundMe uh, account created. Men of the Den just did a retrospective, like in memoriam video, because he was there, what they called Mr. Thursday. Um, their basis when they uh, got started was that there would be seven days a week, there would be a different video, and they spread it out against different uh, for people and topics and stuff. So he mm. was their the Thursday person for quite a while. And then had um, moved in a different direction with some projects uh, back in 2019, I want to say. Um, so, but they, he was a founder, you know, and had a huge impact on on them and the stuff that they did and was very active in his Providence, Rhode Island community. And so, yeah, so that was where that came from with us. So it's, a uh, it's unfortunate that this happens. Um there's a part of me that I, I get reluctant wanting to say this or talk about it, but as we age, this will become more mm-hmm. frequent mm-hmm. because your, your, your community age population, like of similarity as you age, like people age out, so to speak. Um, so, you know, becoming, becoming a, an older individual in the community means that you'll see um, more and more of this over time. So mm-hmm. it's, it was very sudden and unexpected. I think Greg was 46. Um, so I think that really kind of shocked some folks because yeah. I don't think he had any like known medical issues that people would have necessarily seen this, you know, as another development and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, RIP. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Different note, Lloyd says, says in regards to the uh, lesbian comment, didn't men create a separate term, uh, men games out of uh, exclusion more than came out of exclusion more than giving them a definition? And I responded, yeah, but this is the bear community. We're obsessed with labels. 
Moving on. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Going into uh, now the uh, uh, more uh, sexy version. Uh, <clears throat> Six Eyes Thursday. Daddy Bear, also known as Darth Stitch 77. Says, this was my contribution for a Thick Thigh Thursday. Uh, I may have missed it by an hour or so, but uh, better late than never. Okay. And it's just him playing the bed. Completely naked. With his legs open. Nice angle. Nice belly. Nice. Nice. Okay, so just if you were watching the cam feed, you would have seen my shocked reaction because when I clicked the link, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting the family jewels to be front and center. Just saying, <laughs> the yeah, fact that the focus is on thick thigh Thursday, I was expecting like the focus to be on the thighs, which are pictured. Yeah. Well, this is all also Twitter cropped, right. right? So you have to click it to see the full image. Well, right, and the Twitter crop is like zoomed in. <laughs> <laughs> penis and one of the thighs here's the crowded glory oh and then there's more <laughs> FYI you know there's a center part but literally almost front and center of this fucking of this picture like I mean, it's, like just, penis. it's just like slightly off it's very like I would yeah. almost say this has kind of got the thirds look to, into it, or or some there's some sort of artistic sort of thing for the, for the crop, mm. um, you know, because the family jewels are are just left of center. Um, I, I I move my hands to the right just because I'm trying to show left to the people who are looking at my camera. <laughs> got it. Mm. Okay. It's, it's a little left. It's it's it. The crop ended up actually uh, really good. Uh, also, when you expand it out to the full picture, it's very nice as well. Yes. Cool. Crawl in between those thighs. Anyways, <sighs> that's mine. Damon. So I have the infamous Sparta Cubs. Um, at the real Max Hindo and his his title put me in coach. Um, and it's our favorite dude, Sparta, in a wrestling singlet, one of the lower cut ones on the sides. I'm um, in the middle, really. Um, and I'm I'm yeah, I will put it in you. Yeah, that what I would do. Okay. Yeah. It's just a nice picture. I mean, speaking of kind of thighs and thickness and what have you. Yeah. And it's a good fitting singlet. I mean, I actually yeah. kind of like the design. I like yeah. the color combination. I mean, I realize that we're talking about the fashion, fashion. The subject, but he's, he's, you know, he's beautiful. It fits I mean, him well. It looks good on him and he looks good. But Damon, is it fashion? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. That's an inside drag race joke. Um, <laughs> no, but it looks good. I like, I like the color contour, like, especially like how the yellow and the white, like cut mm -hmm. in on like yeah. the thighs. So it like, instead of just being like one solid color, which there's nothing wrong with a solid color singlet, but this is, this is a nice design. Yeah, I really do like the design of the way it looks. And I like the way it looks on him. I think it looks really good. Um, I like the, the nipple out on the side for sure. Yeah, I'm sure both the nice are out. Yeah. It's just he's got the and armor on. Yeah. I don't know if he's attempting to flex or not. I mean, we know he does work out and um but overall this just it looks really good. And it if it wasn't for the fact that it's in like his living room, like I could see this on like a uh like sports like theme porn or um mm. Like if he if he had been like actually on a you know in a in a like gym or something like I could see that working. I think, I think <laughs> he's, sure. he's tried to to also like act out what he he posted mm -hmm. as the the cap the caption put me in coach. Mm -hmm. like, I think he's like put his arm up and is kind of like pointing to himself put me in put me in that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. My That's favorite reply 
<laughs> my favorite reply to this whole thread is, please pin my face with your ass, Jesus fuck. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I keep forgetting that he does have a ten and ten would would wrestle and pin down. So, yeah. so someone, some, someone, oh. not someone, punch people feel it thirsty. Over mm-hmm. this. There's another mm-hmm. picture of him in a singlet. That's kind of cool. I'll have to share that one. Oh, wait, no. Come on. Oh, fuck you. Sorry. There we go. Um, Had to do one more, he said. So, there we go. Oh, God. Okay, keep going. I'll put it in. I'll put it on the... I'm putting it on the dock. Go for it. So uh, for my uh, selections, I actually have two. Um, The first one made me laugh a lot, and I titled it When a Homo. (laughs) And so it's a copy of a tweet from recently, and it says, When a homo swirls his iced coffee, it's like a rattlesnake flicking its tail. Wow. And then it goes on, it says, be cautious, move away quickly. If you're in a team meeting and you hear the ice rattle, it's, quote, unquote, this could have been an email, end quote, <laughs> in gay. Um, oh, I hashtag the truth. <laughs> but it just made me laugh because I was like, how many times have I heard the, like, and I was like, oh, girl, girl, like, I've been that person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. It, it, like it's this, one of like, those things, reflection on, on what's happening, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, David's totally serving it right now. The cam, that's too funny. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone in the comment thread said, bro, I don't drink guys' coffee. What the fuck do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I see it's fine. Yeah, any basically anything with ice in it. Yes, it has to have ice, and you have to have a straw. Yeah, there's, maybe there's or a... or if you're just stirring it, like yeah. So there's that, and then uh, my second one, uh, I said this sexy mofo, because technically this uh, picture does not have a, a caption, but um, so, uh, so it's a picture. You of... captioned it. What's that? So you captioned it. Oh, I, I it's, know um, him. Yeah, it's Griff. Uh, Aww. so he's a sexy puppy and he's not wearing a pup hood, but he does have a hood on in this, uh, picture, but he's smoking pipe, um, mm-hmm. and has a little smoke. And so I wanted to give him like some recognition cause he's, cause he's hella sexy. He's a good guy. He's, he's yes. a real smart. He's adorable. I'm looking forward to seeing him at World Bear because I haven't had a chance. To, I haven't seen him in forever. Oh. <sighs> Oh, and this is a good picture. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, what? Uh, <laughs> what were you saying? Oh. Moving on to length? Yeah, oh, let's move on. Yeah. yeah, moving on to the length. So, hey, you know, we mentioned uh, the Men in the Den. Um, I posted their tribute video. Uh, here's the link. Mm. There you go. Um, it's very heartfelt. It's very touching. It's Mm-hmm. It's it's a great tribute. So yeah, um, we here at Cubs Out Loud uh, uh, offer condolences to the men of the den and the fall at seventy six community um, for their loss of Greg Ballard and just in the bear community in general. Mm-hmm. I know we had a great time when he was on our show. So yeah, it's it's funny. Um, like you. I heard about this from someone who wasn't really like, wasn't in the minute of the den. And I don't believe was in like the gaming community, but just knew him in the bear community. Um, and realizing that I started seeing on Facebook, whatever, multiple people kind of indicating it is like that weird, like how, again, how big yet how small and connected the bear community can be. Um, cause there are many people who have known him for many years, um, uh, either through acquaintance or actually like being friends with him and hanging out with him, um, that commented on his passing and it was just very, just, it was, 
there was a lot of heartfelt good time memories. So right. um, I know this is another loss that is just very rough. Again, considering how it wasn't expected to most of us and um, how sudden it was. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So on a slightly different tangent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, my link, I actually posted a link. Ha, ah, shocker. Um, so my link is the um, Dimension 20 um, Misfits and Magic um, their uh, role-playing game is not D and D, but it is them playing a game. Um, uh, it's GM by Abria Iyengar. It has um, Brennan Lee Mulligan, who is one of their GMs on the Dimension Twenty site, um, is actually a player. Uh, Jim and I watched this last night, and OMG, was it hilarious! Because the idea is that it is it is a world in which Harry Potter exists, the the series, the books, what have you. But this school is not that. It is a totally it is definitely granted, not it is, Yes, it is in London, and it is a prestigious like you know private school for wizards and what have you. But it is not Harry Potter. And mm, okay. and and the people, the students that go there. And the faculty and stuff are such essentially like totally secluded from like the world. So the jokes were the 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 premise is it's for Americans who are exchange students um, at this school, and the Americans have lived their entire lives like in like America as like normal people, and they come to the school with their cell phones and their you know modern you know knowledge and stuff and just that class where people don't know things like they don't know about radio or, or the internet or, you know, phones. It's just Technology very, in general. yeah, it's very hilarious. Just that clash that's going on. It's particularly because of Brennan Lee Mulligan's, um, the way he's playing his character um, is very just like, why like you you obviously should know about this stuff like you can't just not know this like that just doesn't make sense like even if you're a wizard in this like fantasy whatever like yes you have magic but you shouldn't just have magic like you should have like some semblance of reality like some touch of reality and that's what is kind of the conflict so very funny this is the first episode you can only get the first episode on youtube the rest of them are available on um drop out, um, drop out. so yeah, and mm. uh, uh, Brie is also the GM for uh, Alexandria Unlimited over in Critical Role as well. Yeah, which I've also been watching. Um, yeah, mm. cool, cool, cool. Nope, that is not what I wanted. I didn't want Arabia. Shut up. Yes, Brendan cool. is one of the the greatest speakers alive. Yeah, he's really good. He is. He is like. He is Matt level of GMs too. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting con. Like, uh, so again, it it takes pieces of Harry Potter, but it's not Harry Potter. Like, it is not that universe. Nothing is the same. It takes the general idea. Yeah. So anyway, that's that. Hmm. Go watch it. Um, it you'll you'll laugh. I think everyone will laugh. Because it's not in the big. The big thing is it's not D and D, um, but it's It's a different system, it's an and it's just very interesting. Yeah, I like it. Well, thanks for sharing it, David. Because I've never even heard of it. Like I didn't realize <sighs> that there's theoretically so an, an alternative. It it shows it. Um, how do I put this? It's it's four. It's only going to be four. It's only four episodes. They've already um, posted, so they're all available. Like the first one that I've linked is on YouTube, and I think it's a way to essentially draw people to purchase yeah. the subscriptions. Um, they're using YouTube as an advertising platform, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. Gary. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I have two picks. Uh, they're both from Disney. Nothing from Netflix because I haven't watched Netflix this past month. Um, 
So if you haven't already watched any of these, I'm endorsing them. Uh, the Loki series, um, which is a very limited series, but it is getting a second season. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you know anything or have any interest in the Marvel Universe, I highly recommend that you watch this series. Mm-hmm. And what has been determined as to why the series is so important, which is a, a real pivotal shift for Disney is that a streaming television format series is becoming the gateway to the next phase of the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. And there's some interest behind, like, whether or not that will cause confusion for the broader public if they don't have Disney Plus and they only watch the movies. Mm. Like, whether or not that will... uh, you know, work for them or cause issues or be confusing or whatever. And I don't know, like, I mean, like I've talked about repeatedly, I'm late to the the whole aspect of like comic books and Marvel and DC and all that kind of stuff. And um, so all of my interest is based off of like television and some of the films, but I really, really enjoyed how they did this aesthetically. It's really interesting. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I highly suggest that people watch it. Um, it's 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 a whole journey and I'm very intrigued to see where season two goes and how it plays out. So they basically introduced at the end of the series, the new big bad, like for the next phase of the, the Marvel Universe like stuff. And um, it's not a and it's not a misdirect. Like everyone kind of saw little clues all along in the season as to who it could be. And then. Like what's ironic is they thought everyone they thought Disney was gonna shy away from it. Nope, in the sixth episode, boom. Like so, there's that, and then also on Disney Plus, uh, I've been watching the Star Wars: The Bad Batch series. Um, so this is season one, and I say that with hesitance because there is no confirmation it's gonna get any more seasons. Mm. Many people who like the series obviously think that that's like it's just a foregone conclusion that Disney will announce that there's going to be another season. Um, I think that was like 16 episodes and I think we're 13 or 14 in. So we're wrapping up the first season. Um, there's been some interesting like uni- in universe tie in kind of stuff to other characters or characters that are known from other uh, series and stuff. So, yeah. I'll be uh, curious to see how the season ends. And I'm really hopeful that they'll have another season or if not multiple seasons, because it's really it's what you're starting to see is if you watch any of the Star Wars animation stuff out of Lucasfilm, you're seeing over the years, the progression of the technology story writing, like the artistry. And I think this is like one of the best done to date um, in terms of what they're they're pulling and putting together, yet keeping it in a unique style. So. Yes, I'm I'm really hopeful for it. I'm also going to be sad when it ends in a couple of weeks. But yeah. uh, and then we're going to have a, a whole other thing. So uh, don't be surprised if in a month, I, next month, I start talking about Star Trek's uh, Lower Decks mm. um, animation series, because that's about to, to have its second season. And dang it, what else is coming up? There's a bunch of stuff coming up here in August. So, yeah, Thanks. there's um, yeah, there's stuff all over. I can't forget. Well, there's some uh, movies that are coming out, but the for I'm thinking Disney Plus slash Marvel. Um, um, there are a couple of other things I wanted to watch, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, um, I did. Oh, and I didn't list it, but I did go see Black Widow in the movie theater. Oh, um, I really liked it. I had to say, like, it's probably one of my favorite Marvel films. But that's for me. It was because it was like centered around like one primary character and kind of their like a little bit of their history it isn't the historical origin story that i think a lot of people were expecting mm-hmm. um, but that's okay and it was definitely an actiony packed like you know a lot of shit happens um mm. and i think i've already talked openly about the fact that david harbour um totally gave me like illegitimate like you know intimacy <laughs> like <laughs> fantasy uh-huh. uh, so yeah but and that's yeah. kind of it. I mean, I'm looking forward to the next movies and stuff that come out. So I think uh, one thing I do like about Marvel Studios right now is is they find that there are sometimes you don't need to have a full movie for an origin story. 
They've done it like twice. Mm-hmm. With, with Iron Man and Captain America, I think that's it. Okay, I mean, the first Thor Didn't movie wasn't all- really an origin of Thor. It was just kind of like him getting introduced to to the into the into Earth universe. Yeah, so yeah. that's really the only thing that that was about. But it had a full other story around around it. Um, mm. but it's not necessarily an origin story. Um, Sony has also kind of gone along with that because the their first of their current generation of spider-man movies wasn't another origin story (laughs) they've already told it twice (laughs) so they they didn't feel like they needed to to do another uh uh spider-man origin story well thank laura for that yeah well, I mean, and that, and I think that is one thing that people get fatigue on when it comes to pop mm-hmm. culture things is like having the same thing told over and over and over again. It's like, that's great. I get it. Like, there are 30 different versions of how this could be told, but the reality is it's still the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, less, Let me... lesser known might throw in some sort of origin thing, but maybe it's like a few snippets of uh, exposition. Uh, by the way, when playing uh, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen and streaming it, uh, every time we get to a point where they don't actually have like text and it's just somebody talking about something that just recently happened that we just watched, uh, I just always go, exposition. Yeah. Sorry. Side note. Anyways. No, it's fine. Hey, guess what? That's all. Yeah. I think that's the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Play with contact us. Pop over to her website. Comes out loud.com. She has an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 CL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and various other social media outlets. That comes out loud in the appropriate place in the URL. You can join our entourage chat at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning on doing these and disregard the fact that this on the calendar was list- labeled as 611. It was originally going to be 611, but because of reasons, it ended up being 610. Don't worry about it. But that's at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. Uh, you get various uh, accoutrements, such as a Cups Out Loud logo shirt that Gary and Damon are wearing. And notice, they're in different colors. You can select the thing and then select a different color if you want. You can also get hats like Gary is wearing. Uh, I am hot because I live in Austin, so I'm just wearing a nice thing. Oh, there we go. It comes out loud mug. Oh, drag race mug. Oh, oh, oh. oh there we go. Okay. Yeah, various drag race stuff, too. Uh, that's at zazzle.com slash comes out loud, obviously, if you're in a different country than the United States, uh, just scroll down to the bottom and there's a way to change it to your country for your pricing and I believe also shipping. Um, so you don't have to pay to have it shipped in for the United States. Mm-hmm. You can also become a patron and we thank all of our patrons, but you'll see a card right after we uh, wrap up here. Um, uh, that you can become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud. Uh, also, if you want to send up some, some cash, just a one time little donation thing, you can do that at paypal.me slash cubs out loud. You can find us anywhere you can find podcasts Apple Podcasts, Google, Amazon, Audible, Spotify. And if for some strange reason your favorite podcast directory yet uh, we're not showing up, let me know and I'll look into that. Mm-hmm. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box puppy box cup box something or other or over on Twitch where later today it will be wrapping up Stormblood. I'm sure I may be jumping into Shadowbringers uh, with um, uh, over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash windjum w y n d g e m. You can see the prelude to violent the 4.4 in the um, col gaming playlist right now because I actually posted that right after i had finished streaming yesterday i was actually on time for that also some bears and dragons are actually tonight and don't miss uh drag race are you guys going live today or you're gonna pre-record 
No, we're just continuing with the the pre record. Pre record, okay. Because of reasons. we're already halfway through the up season. Uh, so that will be posted tomorrow night because I'm too busy during the day to work on uh, posting it. But because it'll be working. posted tomorrow night. Because I'm working. So well, it'll be po- posted tomorrow work, night. Work, so we can watch work, you for work, that. Work. Anyways, Damon. Uh... Um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73 uh, for Twitter, um, for the. Uh, not safe for work. We'll put it that way. Um, it's Gabriel seven three X X X. And with that, say good morning, everybody. Morning. <laughs> Ciao for now.